Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. It's still Halloween. I made it just in time. Well, no, it's not just in time. It's actually not that late, but it's getting there. In any event, happy Halloween. <laughs> I know I said that this morning in my message today, which if you did not check it out, the breaking news message, I definitely suggest that you tap in. It was some pretty interesting stuff. Um, yeah, so tune in as you will. But uh, I did say happy Halloween at that time, but it was in a different vibration. So, you know. It may have been lost in the shuffle of that transmission. <laughs> but I had a wonderful day with my son. We hit the town and definitely racked up, hit licks out there for candy. Like this year was the best year yet. Last year was like, eh, cause it started raining on us. Like, you know, we got out kind of late because I didn't, I was, I'm kind of new to the trick-or-treating thing. When I was younger, I didn't do trick-or-treating. We, I was a, a Christian kid. So we had harvest fest and harvest parties and fun stuff, but I just never, ever, ever went trick-or-treating until three years ago when I first took my son and it was my first time as well. That was the year that he was, a I called him a zombie soldier he corrected me and said that no i was a zombie ninja so there's the correction from earlier he was a zombie ninja <laughs> the first year we went trick-or-treating and then last year um as i said he was the reaper death himself with his scorpio self and then this year he was a special ops general which was is more or less like the uh Call of Duty character or whatever. I, so he says. I mean, I don't really know, but I, I believe so. But um, yeah, he has picked his costumes every year. He is very serious about Halloween. He gets very excited. He informed me today that he this is his favorite holiday even over Christmas, which maybe it is for a lot of kids because kids love candy, perhaps even more than they love toys, I guess. I don't know. But um, we had a wonderful day. I'm just a little bit tired from all the walking because we hit the town, like definitely went through neighborhoods that we never did before. And we got out early, so we got a good start, a good leg up on all the good candy. Hit quite a couple homes that were giving away the big bars, the full-size candy bars. And yeah, got in at a pretty decent time. It was a little darker than I anticipated, but people were still out, strangely, you know, as opposed to last year, people got in early. But this year, people, kids of all ages were still out and about when we were headed in. So it was a great day. And I hope you had a good day too. And it was safe. And I pray Send prayers and blessings over your candies and snacks, you know, whatever you did get, that they be, you know, for the edification of your mind, body, and spirit, you know, all pure satisfaction there. And yeah, so it was a wonderful day. Definitely one for the books. And he got so many compliments. Oh, by the way, I did post a couple of uh, pictures on the community tab if you want to check out his costume and um I mean the pictures don't really do it justice because I swear he was just getting compliments all day like everywhere we went people were like wow I really love your costume it just has a lot of detail for it to be a kid's costume and and all the little accessories and his artillery and stuff but um, yeah, I posted a couple flicks of, of that, really pics, not flicks, um, of him and one picture of me and, um, also a couple, a couple, um, well, one particular of his costume last year when he was a Grim Reaper. And then of course, all of his action shots after that. So yeah, 
All right, so I'm babbling on. Whoa, I'm not taking these, but look at this energy here. I don't feel got it to take it, but just check it out. What is back here? Poor investments, anxiety, sleepless nights, a past life regression or past life experience, uh, hard work, and the devil card. Interesting. All right, spirit. Now I'm focused. I'm focused, man. Oh, what's that? All right. Crossing over. Um, reconciliation, perhaps. Moving from more calmer, moving, moving from more uh, turbulent times to peaceful, calmer waters, more mentally, if nothing else. Let's see what else we got. Is that it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, is it just about us crossing over? Is that all we need to know? Okay, you see this, right? Okay, Emperor and the uh, Ace of Pentacles. Let's get one more. Um, interesting. Too many. Page of Pentacles. That's a message. Okay. Pardon my neighbor. She's clearly in the holiday spirit in some regard because I never hear her that hyped up. She been on one for for a minute now <laughs> i don't know if she got company or on the phone but she's super loud this emperor is trying to stop a crossover moment into some um divine fortune of peace and harmony and um there awaits some it's like somebody's waiting and the, that's what I'm seeing. Like there's somebody awaiting this arrival or emergence of this energy. In the meantime, though, he's like protecting this territory. But this emperor is in the way. That's, that hit me immediately. Like this emperor is trying his absolute, what was this? Mm. <laughs> his darndest, I'm not going to take it, but you, you caught what that was, a heartbreak card, trying to slip out like, see? Trying to, trying his darndest to, to obstruct this crossover moment. Yeah, like, look at this. Positioning himself as some authoritative God force What's on the other end of, of this this hierophant? Yeah. I mean, he's either going to have to step to the side or that's yet again like what's what's being blocked or or he he wants to keep some he mm, they're like facing two directions like she's facing off this is a single lady independent you know secure stable on her own right but definitely an implication of somebody that is single solo this energy is walking away from a great investment an emotional investment at that what's this slipping around justice so there's going to be some equal and balancing out of this situation but in 
is this is this now or is or is this what it was? What are we what's those next two cards? Where are we going with this? Because now when I see the judge the justice, it's like, where is this? Yeah. Hella competition is what I see. A surrounding a great fortune and a fortunate partnership is what the Four of Wands is giving me. There's some union, some coming together that is stable and secure and harmonious that there just seems to be like a clash of the titans regarding because this is the forward movement and progression into this cross. This is this is the promised land right here. This is what they're crossing over into. Well, th for me, this is given like spirit guidance, crossing some individuals over. the the This aspect here, the one, I mean, it could be man, woman, and child for sure. But it's, um, let's leave it at that. This emperor is an obstruction trying to block the connection to these components here up top. The centric force being this ace of pentacles, this is what's to be harvested by, I was going to say by whomever gets to it first, but it's not that because the emperor is just as close to it, but it doesn't belong to the emperor. It belongs to whomever's name is assigned to it, whosever energy is assigned to it. And that's why I'm saying like the emperor is in the way because for whatever reason, the emperor feels that he has, um, he has rights to it or some entitlement to it based on, you know, the possessive, aggressive energies that the emperor um, projects, but in actuality, what I'm getting is that he's just running interference, really, because if it there would, if it truly was divine to to him or it, you know, let me speak universally too, because we know what happens. I start speaking all all personal in general. <laughs> Then I'll be like, oh, shit, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Cause, so the emperor can also be the establishment authority, you know, like the president, the king, you know, the, the head of an empire, you know. So figure that. And we're talking about the ace of pentacles being not just material manifestation, but also how I read it a great deal is gifts but of a divine nature. So something very blessed and highly favored and coveted in a practical sense, because it seems like, you know, there's a lot of attention and focus on this pentacle and, and obsession for the possession of it. But it only, it only true. It's, it's, it's an assignment though, that everybody doesn't get to assume so you got the King of Wands here that's kind of sitting on the out. Now his he's protecting this territory, this establishment, but even he's at a great distance from the pentacle. Why? He's on the outside. The emperor is the closest to it, but that's who that's just who's been gatekeeping it this whole time. That's what that is. He's been gatekeeping it, but it's still, it's open on this side though. Interesting. So we got the single lady and it's like, she has pentacles of her own, but the lot of them don't truly compare to the, the magnitude of the Ace of Pentacles. She has many gifts, many, uh, material manifestations, many coins, you know, perhaps materially well off, but definitely spiritually so. Like her energy is high, high, high octane. 
but this hierophant here is a blockage yet again like how his hand is almost up trying to stop her from moving forward or moving ahead or trying to stop somebody from moving ahead and following their inner guidance which is what directed and in, up into this pentacle this is like a portal i'm seeing here with this ace of pentacles it's like enemy surround oh is there some type now i've talked about this regarding you know the, the conflict overseas i just heard tunnels underground tunnels And look, that's what that looks like. Look, it's like a portal. Ooh, I don't even know if I should be going in on this. This seemed kind of, I don't want to give up the tape on something that's supposed to be top secret now. <laughs> and I mean that generally, personally, every which way, little spirit, you know. You know, you got to be shutting me up. <laughs> But yeah, I see that there's some there's some escape into some portal that leads to this prosperity that and that's why it it can only be accessed by who is assigned to because in the 3D there there's a lot of energies. Look at this Knight of Swords over here that's hot on the tail of the Hermit. The fused energy of the King of Swords. This is this is him over here pretending like everything is everything, like he's unbothered. Yeah, oh, I'm just over here minding my business, looking forward to the future, looking ahead, you know, facing forward. Yeah, living in truth. But secretly, this is his energy here, Knight of Swords, on the tail of, and he's hot on the tail, though, low key. Of whatever this escape is or it's not an escape what is it it's a oh it's a timeline jump literally with the hermit card here and the eight of cups this is like literally somebody making a decision to walk away from what doesn't serve them in faith and this is the walking away is from the the um, structures and orders of conventional society, like what's been designed as the norm. You know, like stepping out of the norm, walking away from what's the contemporary, the containment of society, the dictation of what is righteous, what is acceptable, all of that, you know, more um, confined conventionalities to in this regard. This is somebody that steps away from that and finds themselves slipping into a portal because they've listened to their, they followed their inner guidance and inner light. <laughs> I see it so clear. It's like slipping in and it's like every everybody else in the 3D on the outside is like, where'd they go? Where'd he go? He was just here a minute ago, like hot on the trail. Where'd he go? It's like they disappear out of thin air. How is that? Tell me how that works, spirit. So I don't sound crazy here. <laughs> mm, how does that get to work? Maybe that's the part that's definitely not supposed because I ain't hearing nothing on that. And I guess that's why it said that it's for the one who is assigned, like only one person has this key or whatever, whatever this portal is, it's, it's only, um, it's only accessible through a specific key or like a secret pass, pass it, pa a secret password or a, I don't even know. This almost looks like, you know, like the, on the safe, like the knob that you would turn, you know, the numbers on the safe. That's what that's giving me right there. Oh, wow. And this, and, and ghosting, yeah, for sure. This is somebody who was here 
here in a, here in a second and gone in a flash. And society can't catch up, can't catch up with them. Foes and whomever this is, opposition can't catch up with them. Perhaps family, because the emperor definitely can be a father figure, can't catch up. And what's this four of wands? I feel like that's the secret secret passageway to this, like, this world is kind of like off to the side a little bit. You know, it's like people are looking for it to be in one place in the center of something, but lo and behold, it's in the, I just hear, hear the, the last place you would look for it. Oh my God, I can't wait to watch this back because I don't even know. Come on, give me some, give me some spirit. Don't let me leave this without knowing what the hell is going on here. <laughs> and the last place you would look for it is where this portal is. We got the Knight of Wands. Another night hot on the trail. Now this night, what's this night doing? And then we got the page of cups. And then the three of cups. Some type of three party situation. Oh, these, I think the day of the dead is tomorrow and we're in Halloween energy too. So the hermit card can definitely be um, I definitely get paranormal vibes when the hermit card comes out, whether it be passed on ancestors, predecessors, angelic guides, forces, you know, that type of thing. So someone is being led in the spirit. That's why it's not, they're not traceable or trackable in the 3D because their steps are being guided from an intangible compass or through, is it raining? I think it is. Through some intangible compass. Compass, look at that, Ace of Pentacles. And so we got this three-party situation. Now, these are giving me witch vibes. I ain't even going to lie. Maybe because it's Halloween, but there's something about this energy that... I don't know. We'll, we'll get into it. But the Knight of Wands, the Page of Cups, this is a message of an emotional essence. Could be an apology, a endearment, a I love yous. But this is some this is a message being offered to this Knight of Cups, like the wrong type of energy to be offering some term of endearment to, especially with his back turned. Hold on now. So this is someone that I, I keep hearing puppy love. I can't get that out of my head, but this is like someone that thinks they have an affinity for someone else, but it's very, it's, it's, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> is it obsessive? What is this? It's, it's not obsessive, but it's, um, finessive <laughs> but why is it a page and not and not a knight coming out why is it coming out as a little person a little love offer like definitely underdeveloped at least the knight of, of cups is a, is an advancement in that finesse like at least it would match that vibration I don't 
don't even like what I just felt. Like someone, maybe just someone extremely younger or definitely someone that's emotionally underdeveloped or immature. A great deal so, though that they don't even really know what love truly is with that fish in the cup, is lusting after a knight of wands who is routing out like long gone, about to hit the road, Jack. And they're here still left holding this cup looking hopeful. I don't like that energy, I'm, I'm a, We'll come back to that in a second, but cause and it just takes me on a whole nother another sideline like like that looks like a kid fiending for an adult is what I see. And now we got God damn there's some weird ass energy. What the hell? Then we got the strength card and we got the tower. I'm taking that. No, let's not take that. The strength card and the tower. Something shocking is coming. Sorry, I'm still looking at this page of cups and knight of wands. I'm distracted by that. And then we got this person protecting themselves over here. So Knight of Swords gets stopped in his tracks before he even really, he's hot on the, he was hot on the tail, fresh on the tail of whatever, you know, right, right on the tail of whatever this escape was, but he, something comes crashing down for him before he can even make it. So what is this Hierophant? Oh, you know what I, mm. Why am I hearing that? You know the inferences about priests, which is the Hierophant, and young boys. I'm gonna leave that there. Loving them and leaving them. Leaving them depleted and diminished. And, and notice the the page, the page of cups when i opened the the um deck it was the knight of cups because even as they because they've been um desecrated even as they grow older they're still like regressive into this childlike state because it's unresolved trauma that's what this energy is giving me so this is someone trying to hold up a position of authority and power and dominance and literally trying to play God in a situation that they don't have no right playing God in because they, <laughs> they, they need a savior pretty much. They need, they need repentance. They need to be baptized something. That's what this energy is giving me here. Taken, have, have taken advantage of young, impressionable. And even if it's not physical, it doesn't have to be, even though the Knight of Wands is here, which is giving me it absolutely is. Emotional is enough. That can be worse, as a matter of fact. To, to be emotionally abusive, aggressive, or inappropriate with young people that are in some ways um, dependent on your protection or that you should just be able to, to trust and feel protected by. And that, that, that um, relation, relational dynamic is exploited in some way. That's what I'm getting there, and I don't even know why. So maybe that's the things that are going to stop them, but I don't see any. I definitely see a stop in the tracks here with this tower card, that something is not going to allow. Oh, pardon me. 
not going to allow this energy to continue on in his pursuit toward this advancement here that he's going to be stopped by whatever sudden change or event or um, circumstance happens that he's going to ultimately have to be protecting himself from or regrouping from because, you know, it'll take his attention most immediately to do so. But the Hierophant, um, you know, I don't know why I'm reading that, but what I was saying, what I was going to say is it seems like these are the things that are going to keep these people at bay from ultimately infiltrating or con in this case infiltrating in this case continuing to block this you know this evolvement whatever it may be to stop being a, an obstruction to it and stop being a distraction or destruction of it on both sides it's like they're they're both like trying to close in on this thing for different motive motive with different motives and different intentions but they really don't have they're not in a position really to be focusing on anything outside of themselves based on what I'm picking up energetically here now let's see let me go let's go a little deeper over here because then we got the three of cups which like I said seems like some witchy vibes some you know Here's rapid communication or movement of what nature? Yep. And there's that. Okay, so this is energy that was sent out. And now it's returning. So there's been... emotional manipulation and some perverted energy is what I'm feeling has been sent in for the purposes of desecrating young impressionable I'm hearing star seeds and now that energy is returning to cinder with a vengeance, with the aid of, of wands. So everything that was sent out, look. Yep. And there's that. Everything that was sent out, that was expelled. And remember I said with these young souls, even if it wasn't physical and it was simply emotional, energetic, um, psychological, you know, and things that weren't even weren't even tangible. What it did is it stunted their growth. It it stunted those that have been violated or impacted in whatever diabolical way this is from maturing to the fullest capacity of which of of what they are, you know, what they were destined to do when you consider the level of trauma that comes along with being violated and you know about it, there's also the aspect of psychological violation um, that happens more in the psyche and subconscious that you don't know about, which is why it, this was like the Page of Cups and then the, the, the Knight of Cups was in the deck. It's like... There isn't even there, and and then the Knight of Wands, which is impulsive and compulsive, and often perverted in their passions. They don't even know why they act out the way that they do. You know, certain individuals. It's almost equivalent when you have someone that's been abused in their in the deep dark of their psyche. They create habits and behaviors that usually are. Um, are you know not very healthy holistically, but they're connected to that dark current in in the psyche 
that they don't even have a consciousness of literally it's subconscious they don't have a conscious a conscious of why they're exactly they're doing what they're doing because the abuse and the and the torment I didn't mean to say torment I meant to say trauma but torment yes it is is so deep rooted that an eighth house eighth ener eighth house energy not really eighth house but with this eight here with the eight of wands is so deep and dark that unless you have some assistance or guidance um and something to really you know or even just inspiration to really lead you into that space you can't even get there to begin to dig up those roots and burn them, you know, they just, they just keep growing. And, and even what you don't see growing on the surface per se, or don't have the direct connection to like, I have these flowers, they came from this root, you know, like you don't even know why, for instance, you have unhealthy relationships. You don't know why you make impulsive decisions or you can't seem to um, commit to anything, you know, you feel unstable in your, in the practical things of life. Like you're doing one thing, the next, you get bored with that. Then you want to go off and do the next thing. Like these are currents that run in our subconscious and usually from childhood, from emotional damage as a child, or just impressions that are made or projections that we absorb that we don't even realize become a part of our being and we have no you know no direction otherwise you know cuz this is just life you know living life like you know business as usual type of situation it becomes just a way of life is what i'm trying to say that you don't even know to look for the source of a problem because you're not even really aware that a problem exists if that makes sense this is witchery it is trickery and i don't know of what source of what what sorcery but i'm feeling this vibration for a reason and it takes someone that really have a strong will to want to do something different with what did I say spiritual guidance to do so in order to first of all survive the inevitable tower moments that occur when you're living in a vibration such as this it probably is like nothing ever quite goes well or goes right because this is the current that you're running on this is like your electrical current toxicity trauma PTSD, perversion, abuse, um, insecure, like these, it's a result of this, this abuse here that's incurred from people. And it doesn't have, doesn't mean it has to be a Pope or a preacher or any religious figure, but someone that is in a position to be, to, to have a responsibility of protection and guidance. That's, that is, avowed to that position and is and is not only not acting in the integrity of of that responsibility but is actually abusing okay and that's what the emperor is for because this is an abuse of power like i said playing god in people's lives taking advantage of the position and authority that has been obtained to ultimately make very dark, deep impressions on um, those in his care and keeping them more or less deficient from their own divinity, from reaching any type of divine status, there's that. And also keeping them distracted by their own impulses and, pro and not projected, pardon me, projected and induced impulses and perversions for the, so that they can't even mature at a natural rate holistically and healthily. They're like stuck in this constant state of, I don't even know what to call it. Like, what is that state? Like a, like a poor little boy 
or poor little kid. It doesn't have to be a boy, but of course it feels like a boy, you know, like, yeah, like a poor little boy, a hurt little boy. I hear these witch bitches are toasted to the good life on account of at the demise of, I should say, unsuspecting targets. So there was some energy expelled here to support this invasion of sorts, this closing in, this. But even they can't get in. They're, they can't get in. And, and little do they know, they about to be devoured by their own egos. That's what this strength card is giving me. They don't even know that this beast is about to be unleashed on them. So that's how they get stopped. This gets stopped because how, how the Hierophant thinks he's getting away is exactly the energy that he's about to meet. Maybe these this is communication. This is rapid movement. Maybe these energies that have been... Um, that have been disenfranchised, desecrated in one way, shape, or form are beginning to mobilize their objections against this person, literally objections. And that's the, some legal action is about to take place with this Hierophant energy here by way of the emperor energy at the top. Some exposure, some, some, um, this is, the, you know what this is? This is uh, charges that he thought he evaded. He meaning he or he meaning they, let's say that. Because like I said, this could be a one person situation or this could be the establishment. Charges that they think they evaded and got away with like, how you think you getting away on the spirit? Like, how that work? <laughs> like, you thought you you thought you you deceived source? You thought you deceived the spirit? Oh, because you saw that they, they were being too, they were being patient. So you thought, oh, okay. It was misunderstood that because so much time, temperance is like patience time maybe it probably took some time for this situation to catch up and because oh I just heard um statue of limitation so you thought you evaded justice because and the justice card did come out too didn't it it did peek out okay I get it now so you thought you evaded justice or at least karma because of some statue of limitation on these impending charges or for whatever reason, this individual feels like they're, they, they're untouchable, even unto the spirit, if, apparently. But what they about to find out, what they about to be hit with is all these charges, eight of them at least, literally eight charges and if it's not physical, which I believe it is, like actual court, you know, like some type of indictment is what I hear, it's spiritual. And that's that's worse. I, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say, like, you, you might rather be hit with eight charges and maybe get out of five of them in man's court. But in spiritual court, ain't nothing missing. It's landing directly where it's supposed to land. You ain't going to dodge not one of these bullets right here trying to get away or thinking you're getting away. And not only are you going to pick up the charges that are being um, that are being thrown at you, but you also going to face the energy that you expelled to 
evade the charges in the first place, if that makes sense. Like everything that you that you did to try to get out of it or try to manipulate the system is actually going to kind of be tacked on. Ain't no time served. Look, this is the jail card right here. Nine of nine of for me, like the eight of one eight of swords for sure. But that to me is more spiritual prison or or confinement. The nine of one the nine of swords definitely when I'm talking in a vibration such as this gives me I heard war criminal. Oh my gosh, what the heck am I tapping into? The Nine of Swords definitely gives me jail cell vibes, like somebody sitting, sleeping on a hot, a hard cot, this thin ass mattress here. These are the bars, you know, on their cell. They thought they got away with it. Then hear all these charges come out of nowhere, bam. And they hit and where you least expect it. Like they catching you in the daytime, just going about your day-to-day -day routine, like business as usual, life as usual. Then all of a sudden, like, are you such and such and such? You've been served type of vibe or the actual damn police for such a thing as serious as this. But I don't know the true nature of it. You know, for all I know, it could be spiritual, um, spiritual indictment, meaning it's just karma that hits, especially with the tower here, which does make a lot of sense. Karma that hits all at once, like rapid fire, like car broke down, lost your job, your, your health is failing, your, your wife or your partner, your wife or husband left you. Your dog died. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like at one thing after another type of situation. That's what this entered. And like I said, what's worse? At least, you know, you're going to jail, you're going to jail. That's your fate. But here it's like you don't even see this energy coming and you don't know when it's going to stop and you don't know what's going to happen next. You know, like you don't even know the magnitude of what you're about to face, let alone the beginning from the end type of vibe is what this is. And and then with the temperance card in the middle is like it's all fair game because there was some fuck shit going on here. So it's like nothing unjustified about anything that's going on. And then this don't let me forget about this guy over here, because that's just him. Rem rem remember this is the outskirts of the energy that they're so fixated on still still trying to pierce. He's too fixated on continuing to play God and try to create blockages that he doesn't even see the impending danger in his life. He's too busy trying to um, to force his way into a future or a destiny or a fortune that doesn't belong to him or or to to ultimately assume a destiny and fortune that doesn't belong to him with this sense of furious entitlement that he doesn't see how his world is crumbling apart. You know, things are literally falling apart. The bottom's falling out from this guy and falling apart. The bottom's falling out from him too with the tower here from both of them, but they're too fixated on something outside of themselves. And didn't I say that? Because I think the page of swords popped up too, yep, in the very beginning with what was that other card? It was the page of swords. Damn, I wish I could. I wish I could. Oh, was it the three of swords and the page of swords? Ah, I can't remember. No, I think the Three of Swords came out on its own, but the Page of Swords popped up when I said somebody paying attention to something outside of themselves. That's this energy here, worrying about everything else but their own destiny and well-being. Too fixated and, and, and uh, obsessed with maintaining some control and pat and 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 power and pos and possession of something that they just don't have the right or authority to do so someone else's destiny someone else's fortune someone else's independence here someone else's direction in life someone else's relationship someone else's strength 
and willpower is what that is. Someone else's mystical force, because this is giving me that forces were infused outside of themselves. They in incorporated and implicated other energies to help, you know, um, to help intensify this advancement of sorts. And like I said, they can't get in either. And it, for me, it feels like they don't even really care. They probably just took took the money and, and went on about their lives. But they about to fit, like I said, they about to find, fuck around and find out too with this lion here. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm definitely picking up on that. Definitely picking up on that. And they probably presented themselves to have done something um, that would yield positive results. But like I said, the, the will of the objective force is too strong and they're about to be devoured because that energy is going to go back to them as well. Everybody's getting returned to senders on this board. So the nine of, of wands is upset because he's pretty much outside of, you know, this, this is what his vision was for, to be this king of pentacles. That's, you know, like I said, everybody's after this pentacle, right? That's the centric force on this board. This divine, like control of resources, but some big resource. And they're willing to break through all types of barriers and create all types of conflicts and casualties just to say, I'm the one that holds the pentacle, the, the golden coin, so to speak. For whatever reason, that's they believe that this is what holds the power. And that's the issue because although this is the Ace of Pentacles, which does come from a divine space, it's still a material expression, which is not the end all be all to anyone. That's just the residual reward of spiritual work. And these energies here have completely forfeited any type of spiritual devotion. This is sword energy over here. This is someone that's presenting themselves to have self-control and to be righteous. But in actuality, we already discussed what's going on there. So it's like the reason why these energies don't have access to this divine fortune here is because they're, they're unpure. They're sullied, as a matter of fact. They are not worthy in the, in the condition that they are they have been operating in to literally behold this great gift they haven't aligned their vibration to be a match for for source to be able to plant this type of seed in their garden they may I don't even see no other pentacles other than the the nine of pentacles which is all all, all already um and, and a target over here, this is who the Hierophant is trying to keep from moving on about her merry old life. And she has nine pentacles in her garden, but even still, it's not in a comparison to this anointed pentacle. But that's the suggestion that at least she's been intentional about cultivating some small, you know, idea of energy. Like, well, some, some, some small um, manifestation of energetic prosperity of spiritual source because that's what that card means that is her being upright in the spiritual sense that has ultimately manifested in the in the material sense and she's grateful and and, and in grace with it all it's, but it's not that that makes her this is it's just her contentment with what she's acquired and what she's established for herself because she follow spirit first. And so this guy was idolizing the persona of this high value man 
this king pen energy, this is what he aspired to be, the king of pentacles, and has clearly fallen short out of that tower because all along he's been aggressively pursuing this ace of pentacles when, like I said, it wasn't entitled to him. It wasn't assigned to him in this way. He was going about it in the wrong way. And so therefore he got blocked by spirit and was his route was detoured really as an invitation for him to find his own spirit guides and the light within him to follow that to a more objective um, pathway. But he didn't want that. As seen here, <laughs> where the tower, the bottom has fallen out for him, he wanted to keep getting it the aggressive way, strong arming it, ultimately. Laying claim to things that just were not his, you know, and, and going after it by any means necessary. That's the energy that the Knight of Swords is giving me. But projecting as if, just like the 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 Hierophant, projecting himself as if, you know, he is doing things the upright way, the honorable way that, you know, he's just the expert in his field and he's gotten it honest and, you know, he knows he he's a genius in his own right when in actuality he's just a knight still in energy taking advantage of people mentally psychologically abusive or at least intrusive at best just and just want to barge his way into the spirit to demand whatever his you know whatever it is that he's seeking for. I don't even know, like who, it don't even matter. But this is him down here at the Nine of Swords. <laughs> Either just completely depleted for falling short of his plan, you know, and his, his, his ultimate fantasy, and now having so much to contend with on account of what he ultimately created for himself. Like I said, this is, this is the centric force here that, there's nothing unfair going on here. Every The universe is just balancing out the playing field. You thought you was getting away with something? Well, bam, there you are. Charges, resistance, all that you get faced with. Every energy that you ever expel coming back to you. You, you, you thought that you was going to be the man, you know, that your 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 power and authority was staked in how much money you could make or steal, you know, with that Knight of Swords energy up there, like how you how aggressively you could strong arm your way to some superior uh King of Wands, King Ping status, emphasis on King Pen, doing something perhaps unlawfully or at least immoral to gain this fortune. And here you are, nine of swords, bam. Nothing unfair here. Meanwhile, the intended targets that were being blocked, obstructed, stopped, have slipped into this secret passageway, <laughs> literally through this secret garden of sorts with this ace of pentacles card never to be seen again <laughs> is what I hear. Definitely never to be obstructed ever again by the, the likes of these forces. Here one minute, gone another. That's the vibes. Let's see what we got. Yep. And here's the two of swords. It's the crossroads. And the Ace of Swords. What does that mean, Spirit? Ooh. Let me see here. Give me a second. Because in one of them, it's like the crossroads. The lowest vibration of this Two of Swords card is, is either refusing to make a decision or not having all of the facts to make a clear decision, feeling um, 
indecisive or just feeling resistant to a choice. But then the Ace of Swords is the most divine truth and clarity of all. And honestly, like I always say this, but I definitely felt it when I saw it. Sometimes in the highest vibration, I see this energy as someone that appears to be blocked or stuck or blind and, and um stationary you know what i mean like stuck in one place on the on the on the account of needing to make a choice or decision elsewhere otherwise but sometimes it gives me samurai warrior vibes where she looks like a sitting duck she looks like someone that's vulnerable and just easy to just pick off like yeah she don't even see us coming let's go get her now Meanwhile, she got two swords in her hand. And now with the Ace of Swords, it's like she could be blind as a bat, literally, and still slice and dice some of them <laughs> that tried to approach with poor intentions. So it's like, I'm getting that, that and okay, I heard it. People misread misjudged the situation what they saw they judged the book by the cover what they saw or what they see is not what it is it looks like someone that's vulnerable and unaware but what it actually is is divine truth and clarity and vision beyond sight meaning a sense beyond the sensibility. She don't have to see to know. She, ooh, that just has a whole nother ring to it. Like she don't need, this is somebody that is, it, I want to say clairvoyant. Yeah, that's what it is. Because it's like, there's a, there's a knowing in the spirit that ultimately is a protective force because that's what I usually see with these two swords. It's like she got two weapons in her hand and and in a defensive state with them at that. And it's like people look at an individual such as this and, and think that they're a marked target, but someone in the in the essence of what I'm speaking at is clairvoyant that can see beyond what is even visible, let alone beyond what is present, let alone what has already passed, past, future, present, that sword cuts many ways. It's two-edged, if not more. You know, like, to be able to have that that scope of that range of vision ultimately puts you in the position to see your so-called enemy which is why okay which is why which is where the portal comes in the slipping away the escape because she can see the enemy before she can see the plan of the enemy before it even gets off the ground before it even leaves the war room, before it even, you know, the work before it even gets off the altar. Good. The workers that are, that are doing the practice, the block for exactly what it is and who it is, the aggression or the offense so much so much far ahead to be able to position herself with a defense and it's like damn if you can always see it coming before it gets there then what really even has a chance honestly damn That's crazy. Is there anything else, Spirit? 
Hold on, give me a second. Let me just look over. And that's th this is the key to the portal, by the way, if I didn't make that clear. It's, it's the cognizance. Not even just the clairvoyance, but the claircognizance is what it is. That's, that's the key. That's the passageway. Always being open to follow that, in, that light within spirit that speaks through this channel, by the way. To say, oh, time to go. Eight of cups. Time to move on. I don't care how long you've been here. It's time to go now. And to be and to have the the um, the will and the mental prowess, the strength to follow that inclination, to to be able to envision. Well, I I would say catch the vision. Because she ain't seeing nothing if you look in this picture, but it's the inner vision is what it is. The insight. Thank you, spirit. The insight. Having the insight to know and discern direction when time is of the essence. And the enemy is hot on your track on your trail and the obstacles are relentless that's why no that's why nobody can seem to catch up or to it's like she's always I was going to say two steps ahead but maybe even more than that at least three this energy is always three steps ahead here with the six of wands. I mean, with the six of swords, what's that? Yeah, that, that goes to the nine, which is what leaves the enemy distraught and, <laughs> to, and just freaking frustrated because every time they think they got it, poof. Now you see him, now you see her, now you don't. You think you will? No, you won't. Won't obstruct this force. No way. All right, so let me see. Just Let me just glaze over real quick because I feel like I'm going to have a download and I ain't really trying to do no breaking news stuff every day. But hey, if that's what it is now, that's what it is. I know spirit is doing some new things universally, but I really pray to be able to just see all that I need to see with this so I could leave this Halloween energy here and move on tomorrow to something else. So That's the energy in a more personal and general sense, right? I already said that the establishment is, has been, you know, relentless to try to zero in on this evolution, like people acquiring their greatest gifts, their, you know, this, this divine resource um, fortunes that are being passed down that are being released into from from heavenly spaces into the earth you know that are finally coming and materialized and ultimately just from people positioning themselves as I said to be a, a vibrational match to connect with them that's all it really comes down to and the balancing of universal order for those things that have been withheld that shouldn't have been or blocked and shouldn't have been stolen and shouldn't have been these energies are just trying to hold on to their life to keep that evolution from occurring but it's happening no matter what that's intimate that's general that's global that's universal
people celebrated too soon on account of what they thought they got, they withheld or obstructed well enough. Like they thought their collective power was a, was a great enough force to get people to just forfeit their fortune and just walk away, but they didn't realize that people weren't walking, walking away. At least divine people weren't. Divine people weren't. Divine people were walking within, looking for enlightenment as to how to manifest these energies from the inside out. Less about obtaining it from the outside in. And that's the key that's missing with these energies here because they don't know, they only know how to how to do outside in shit. They don't know inside out. It has to be material. It has to make sense. It has to, even when you utilizing mystical forces, it's still for the purposes of material um, things, you know, material uh, obsession, anything outside of themselves. Definitely not about manifesting within. It was always about controlling the forces in the, in the surrounding environment of, of individuals outside of their, their jurisdiction of control for more, more or less. That's not anything that spirit would want to invest in from an eternal ethereal space or source because it's 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 a bad investment to invest energy in people that just want to control others to invest energy I'm talking about long lasting everlasting type of energy that you know the adverse energy will give you quick money all day every day to continue to fuel your fire and keep the operation going but just as soon as you get it is as soon as you lose it it just doesn't hold the same value as something that comes from the supreme source of all that comes from something organic and pure that that it, it it can only attract to something organic and pure which is why these energies feel devoid of it like they're missing something it can never have enough they don't have what this ultimate is because They've idolized the wrong things, the fleeting things. And so therefore, that's what they continue to manifest. And of course, the cycle is that it's never enough. But until there's a shift in perspective to, to center self in this space of truth and alignment, to balance, you know, those energetic vibrations that would call you to feel compelled to measure yourself from, from exclusively material um, reflections is that's the call. And until you do that, you know what I mean? You're never, it's never, it's never going to be what they're looking for. And that's, that's really the thing of it, even from the higher ups now, the so-called powers that be, that they've been measuring their power by how many beings, spaces, corporations, resources they can control and manipulate. But now that that measurement is slipping from their grips and their fingertips, it's like they're looking around like, well, how will I know that I'm the one? How will I know my own power? How will I know that I am this? And you know, that I'm, that I'm worth anything, that I'm worthy of anything. I only really knew because I had these many things, this many people, this many places under my thumb. And now when you don't, and not only in this case where the tables are turned and people not only don't see you as they don't, not only do they not respect your authority and your position and your power, but they actually resist it, admonish it in some ways. Um, 
what's the right word, uh, judge it, when the judge becomes the judged, my God, can you imagine a judge going to jail? <laughs> Just like, what? Or even in this case, this is a spiritual judge, somebody that just always got something to say about everybody else's life on the outside, like just completely trashes anybody that doesn't see life the way that they do or live a certain way or uphold a certain standard of righteousness by their, their, their focus or objective their ideal, I should say. Now, this is on the surface, right? Because under the surface, this is what's going on in the first damn place. But anybody that doesn't do what I do is not worthy. Imagine all their dirty laundry coming out of their, out, all their skeletons coming out of their closet and it looking just like everything they ever judged. That's crazy. And this person acting like they're so upright and so worthy and honorable and decent and fair and, you know, a good man, a, a good man, stable and secure in his own identity and his own truth. And then come to find out they've been doing everything crooked under the sun, not for, for the sake of truth, but for the love of money. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't even know why I just said that, but that's what it is. So, yeah. Anything else here? I feel it's a part. I feel an extension coming on because I know I'm missing something, but I don't want to drag this on too much longer. What is this? What is the final point here? Truth prevails. That's the only thing that prevails because it's the, it's the one thing that can never really be tainted. People can twist it for their, you know, in their own interpretations. They can, you know, outright lie. They can skew it. You know, they can try to to resist it, but it's like, it's one of those things like I'm hearing, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? Yeah, because we know that a tree falling makes a hell of a sound, even if no one's around to hear it. So in that regard, truth stands on its own. It doesn't really matter who believes it, who even knows it, who understands it, who, you know, resists it. It really doesn't matter because it will, it will always stand alone by itself even when it's under judgment or in question. I hope that makes sense in what I'm saying right now. I feel guided to say that. I don't even know if that even matters for this reading, but it matters to me to say it in this moment, that that is what prevails. That is what matters. Um, you know, everything else, Is just everything else. <laughs> Hell, right? But the truth is exactly that. And if you are living in the truth, all these outside forces and interferences 
don't really matter. However they present themselves, whether they be intimate objections and projections and interferences of distractions, whatever the case may be, or all the way up through national, global to universal. Like if the world turns on this access today or tomorrow, where you stand is holy. The anointing rests with you as it's already been ordained to you, no matter what is said or done around you, projected onto you, intended to be afflicted upon you, it will never change the spirit of truth that rests and resides in you because it's come from a supremely ordinate space. And as long as you're in connection with whatever that is, this is the integrity. This is like divine integrity. And also definitely declare the clear cognizant peace and the clairvoyance to have the vision and the knowing of, of self and of circumstances to move when you can't necessarily even see the way and, you know, all of those good things. But is really just being grounded in integrity. As I've been saying lately anyway, like that's that's the key. Everybody doesn't, put, that's why I was saying that because everybody doesn't possess that clearly as we see on the board. Everybody doesn't possess that because there's so many things set up in our waking life that would avert our attention from our own truth. So to actually get to the bottom of it and, and hold fast to it, that that key is that's it's like a a skeleton key and that's probably not the right way to say it but that's just what i hear right now because i think a skeleton key is actually one that can open many doors but in this regard i'm hearing the skeleton key as the only one that can get through that doorway that's divine and destined to you because it's it's activated by your truth which is unique all in its own. And people that are looking to access their own entryway through other people's truths and, and identities and values and gifts and talents and creativities are always gonna be locked out. No entry. Because only that pure energy is admissible. Only the purest form of spirit may enter. Mm, and I just hear, I hear that on a universal level. Those that have positioned themselves to be the gatekeepers of you know, chosenness, divine treasures, only none but the righteous can enter, right? But doing everything but righteousness on the sidelines and implicating a whole lot of, other, it's like getting a lot of other people's hands dirty too and keeping other people from reaching their fullest potential. Like, and then you think you're just going to keep on slipping through the passageway, you're going to lead, lead, um, find your way through yet another portal to enter another dimension to create yet another timeline of, of the same wretchedness? No, that's not happening. It ends now. It ends now. It's time for us to enter a new space of reality. And it's like everybody that wants to keep operating on that old world timeline is ultimately going to, it's like that, it's like, where'd they go? You, you'll, you will have your wish, but the energy that you have ultimately siphoned to live that dream, to create that world, to cultivate that reality, you'll be devoid of that. This world will be devoid of that. 
it won't be able to run on the on the high vibrations that it was siphoning before to operate in that old in those old uh, mechanisms that force fuel has transcended to to higher dimensional mechanics at this time is now operating in a, in a transcendent function on a new dimension and perhaps a new timeline. I don't know. Maybe it's the same timeline, but just in a new dimension. I don't know because I've been talking about this portal. So it's, it's elevated. It's ascended. It's beyond this. But this can still stand but the funny thing is, is that this can't sustain itself. It always needed that, that centric force, that supreme source. And until those supreme source fuels, fuel sources, I guess I should say, realized who and what they were, they were easily able to be siphoned and, distrib and distributed accordingly, but I'm outside of their own will. But now that people are under, they have the vision, they have the truth, they have the knowledge, devoid of all projections, of all distractions, like it's, it's crystallizing more and more for people, like what it really is and what it ain't. This source is no longer plentiful for all to tap into. Now these individuals are actually going to do have to tap into themselves, and what they're finding is that there's as they're tapping into themselves that they haven't ultimately invested enough in the quality of themselves because they've been investing so much in the siphoning of others to then you know, fabricate for themselves, but in the actual purity of their own force fuel, they're realizing, uh-oh, we don't really have much to offer now, do we? Now they got to figure out what they, what they have to offer, but the stakes are higher because now you have to atone and account for all that you've mismanaged and um, mistook ultimately unjustifiably so there's that burden and then also dealing with the um burden of actually trying to find yourself in the midst of you know a million different masks because you don't even really know who you are what your identity is what's your function what's your fortune what's your purpose you know what is it out when it's just about you when you strip everything else away, what does it come down to? Those that did that stripping and found that truth can easily slip into this passageway because they, they're traveling a lot lighter. These individuals are going to have to release some burdens, heavy laden burdens, before they can find their way through that gate. And for those that, you know, really just don't want to do it because the road seems too hard, which is, I, I understand. The hard part is going to be finding the strength and the will to do it anyway. With as hard as it is, as hard as, you know, as daunting of a task as it may seem to actually heal and get to the truth of yourself. They're going to have to do it anyway, or like I said, is either you're going to stick, stay in that vibration, which ultimately will self-destruct destruct because it can't sustain itself, or I don't even know, like the only, the only positive option is to weather whatever the storm may be to get to the light of yourself. Everything else is perishable at this point. So, Godspeed, I say to those that have that task and that path ahead of them. And for those of us, and I do mean us, <laughs> that have already taken that journey 
quite a for quite a quite some time. Congratulations on what you are crossing over into. You deserve it. All right. And until next time, good night, good day, peace.